Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased uh, to be able to welcome you to Athens for this 22nd uh, World uh, LNG Forum. Uh, I would like to apologize uh, for the weather. We've had a lovely month of uh, November, but uh, unfortunately winter seems to be uh, upon us with, of course, uh, consequences when it also comes to our uh, energy mix. Uh, uh, I took note of your introductory remarks and I was thinking that not many of you as uh, experts in the industry would have predicted uh, the momentous events that took place in 2022. So uh, this is, I think, a good time to gather, and I think it's also a good time for you to gather uh, uh, in Greece, uh, as uh, we have also, as you know, invested uh, heavily uh, in our gas and our LNG infrastructure uh, over uh, many years. Uh, and at this you know, very critical juncture uh, for uh, the industry, uh, we're very honored to be hosting you uh, in Athens uh, for the very first time. Uh, I'm convinced that you will have uh, uh, productive discussions over the course uh, of uh, uh, the next few days, and hopefully you'll be more accurate in your predictions about what will happen uh, next year, although I haven't looked through the records of what exactly you discussed a year ago. Uh, I also understand that uh, you will be uh, visiting, some of you at least will be visiting uh, Revithusa on uh, Friday. Uh, while the uh, Revithusa facility, as you know, isn't uh, new for uh, over 20 years. It has been an indispensable asset at the heart of our energy mix, and uh, it would indeed be impossible to imagine Greece without access to LNG and the supporting infrastructure that makes its delivery possible. And of course, never has that been more important than uh, in the wake of Russia's illegal war in Ukraine. We are very well aware of how painful it is to be subject to Russia's uh, blatant attempt to weaponize uh, gas to put pressure upon us to stop our support in Ukraine. Uh, we are fully committed uh, as uh, EU uh, members to continue supporting Ukraine uh, and the Russian blackmail will not succeed, nor will it break our resolve. Uh, such uh, events, however, as the one we are all attending today, uh, demonstrate why, as a Prime Minister, uh, I'm constantly thinking uh, about the need uh, for diversification and uh, flexibility, uh, and asking what investments we can make uh, in Greece to protect Europe's energy security, uh, because this unprecedented crisis is, uh, as you pointed out, undoubtedly redrawing the energy map uh, of uh, uh, Europe. And I'm proud to say that Greece is actually at uh, the forefront of that change. It's an anchor in increasing turbulent seas, uh, and it is as we speak, and aspires to do so even more in the future an exporter of energy security to our neighbors. Our geopolitical and geoeconomic reach has never been greater. Uh, and much of that, I believe, is due to our energy strategy and, of course, our gas strategy in particular. It does also help that we've left the years of the crisis behind us and that our economy uh, is growing at almost uh, six percent uh, this year. Uh, but we have made uh, energy and an energy strategy a, a focal point um, uh, of uh, our uh, national uh, economic strategy going forward. If you look at uh, LNG imports in Greece, they've increased by 50% this year. And as you know, and as you will see, we've added uh, a floating storage unit in uh, Revithusa to add, uh, uh, to expand the facility storage capacity by around 65%. Uh, uh, our first uh, uh, FSRU um, uh, facility uh, will, uh, new FSRU facility will uh, operate in Alexandropolis end of 2023, wow. beginning of 2024. 
uh, and there are several other uh, important uh, terminals being considered that could be uh, developed over the next years. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if you uh, visit us in a few years, you may see two, three, maybe four uh, new terminals uh, beyond the Revithusa uh, receiving uh, cargoes. Uh, our pipeline infrastructure is also expanding. Two years ago, as I'm sure you're aware, we've launched the uh, Trans-Adriatic Pipeline connecting the Caspian Sea to Italy. Uh, TAP is already considering uh, expansion of its operations to support what is a European target to import more gas from Azerbaijan. And on October 1st, uh, we celebrated in Sofia the commercial operation of the IGB pipeline. Uh, this is our second pipeline link to Bulgaria, um, where our exports have tripled over the past year. And uh, a market test for a new pipeline to North Macedonia has been successfully completed uh, over the past months. Uh, and I believe that all these developments uh, pave the way for a brighter future uh, across uh, the region. Uh, I want to be very clear with you. We want to help our regional partners um, um, uh, diversify very rapidly uh, away from Russian gas and break the stranglehold that Russia had uh, on uh, uh, our neighbors. Uh, we believe that in this way we're significantly contributing to regional uh, stability, which is uh, very much tied to energy security. As a country, you're aware that we have made a strategic bet on natural gas. Uh, domestically, uh, gas is one of the main reasons why our coal consumption has declined by almost 80% uh, in a decade. And gas has been, will be, uh, an integral part uh, of our energy transition um, strategy. We used to run uh, a relatively simple grid, uh, uh, importing gas uh, from uh, three points, basically for local use. Uh, but soon we will carry additional gas uh, from the Caspian. And of course, we will send more gas towards the north, but also towards uh, Italy. Uh, I would go as far as arguing that, to a certain extent, Europe's energy security will be going through Greece. And as the industry evolves, uh, we will, of course, evolve uh, with it, uh, with plans to carry, to carry biomethane, hydrogen in the years ahead. Uh, but as you pointed out in your introductory remarks, uh, what the future requires is to currently manage the present, uh, the price of natural gas and electricity is way too high, and the people of Europe are hurting. Our businesses are under considerable pressure. Our budgets are under considerable pressure. Uh, the only reason we can support businesses and households to the extent that we do is because we have been growing at almost uh, six percent, but we're diverting significant resources to make sure we keep the price of energy uh, affordable. Our energy intensive industries, not just in Greece, but in Europe, face an existential threat. And I've been making the case for quite some time that we cannot continue to operate uh, as before. Uh, since March, I've been advocating at the European level uh, uh, in favor of decisive uh, action to essentially impose uh, a degree of order uh, on a market that is no longer functioning properly. Uh, you mentioned you know, uh, the prices we had to, to deal with, the price of gas reaching $100 per million uh, British thermal units uh, in August. That's equivalent uh, to a barrel of oil costing $600. It's not a normal price, and it is clearly not sustainable. And uh, we need to find a new equilibrium, and I firmly believe uh, that Europe should invest more in its uh, gas supply to help ease the current crunch. Uh, we cannot eliminate Russian gas without making investments uh, in new production. We've managed to fill our storage uh, this year, but we did it 
uh, because we are still dependent on Russian gas. 2023 is going to be more difficult. It's clear that we will need uh, more uh, LNG. But it's clear that we also, at the European level, uh, need uh, to uh, explore whether we can actually develop new hydrocarbon assets. This is exactly what we are doing uh, in, in Greece. We are accelerating our search um, uh, for hydrocarbons, uh, uh, in particular southwest of Crete uh, and uh, Peloponnesos uh, in cooperation with uh, Exxon uh, Mobile. We need to be realistic that gas is going to be with us for a while and we need to find a way to secure this supply for our citizens uh, at uh, uh, a reasonable cost. Uh, this is clearly not at the expense uh, of accelerating the development of the renewables industry. Uh, in Greece, we have uh, more than 10 gigawatts of installed wind and solar, po uh, solar power and another two and a half gigawatts uh, of hydro. Uh, and actually on a beautiful uh, sunny and windy day uh, in, uh, in October, when our electricity demands uh, are not uh, uh, so uh, significant because we don't use air conditioning, we did manage to power the entire country for uh, six hours uh, simply using uh, renewable energy. It was an important milestone um, for us. Uh, but this, of course, uh, does not mean that we should not plan for the interim, uh, and the interim period uh, will require uh, gas, and it will also require you, I mean the industry, uh, as partners uh, in, uh, in our efforts. Uh, I think we've seen tremendous um, innovations in the LNG business over the past two decades, both technical as well as uh, commercial. Uh, but there's one thing we yet have not solved, how to continue to invest in gas supply uh, in alignment with the absolute imperatives of a net zero world. And of course, we know some of the ingredients of uh, uh, success, carbon capture and uh, storage, hydrogen, other imaginative ways uh, to repurpose assets in the medium uh, and the long term. What I think we're still missing is a commercial model that brings all of these elements uh, together, uh, which um, is why, uh, even though the, the product that you manage and the industry you have uh, created uh, has made it a tremendous positive impact on our energy security, I would challenge you to use this opportunity to think about these innovative solutions that we need uh, that can deliver uh, energy security now without undermining the process of long-term decarbonization. Uh, after all, uh, Greece, uh, uh, is, as I told you, at the forefront uh, of a green energy revolution in recent years. We're also uh, at the forefront, unfortunately, of a climate uh, crisis. And that's why we need to find those solutions together. Uh, and if we do not, all the work that we do today will be uh, meaningless uh, in the face uh, of uh, environmental and supply challenges uh, of uh, tomorrow. Uh, once again, let me welcome you to Athens. Uh, hope that you uh, come back at some point for business uh, or uh, for pleasure. And my best wishes for a successful and solution-driven gathering. And let me hope that uh, 2023 is not going to be as unpredictable as 2022 and that we as, uh, uh, as leaders will not spend so much time trying to become not experts, but at least uh, vaguely knowledgeable about your complicated industry. Thank you very much.